Hey good people, it is Tashara Politics and Fashion here today with the third video in my solopreneurship series. And today's video is all about money, 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 okay? Uh, we are talking about that bag, sis. Not Chanel, not Dior, not Saint Laurent. We are securing the bag of coin, okay? And it is one of the biggest questions that you all ask me about money, finances, finding clients, all those things over on my Instagram page when I asked you what you wanted to learn about in this third installment of my solopreneurship series. Now, let me just say, that while we are in the time period of what has been called the great exit, where so many people are quitting their jobs, I don't want this series to come across as me condemning people who do work a nine to five because there are many, many benefits to working for an employer. However, if you are itching for either an additional stream of income or to start your own business as a solopreneur, then girl, you have come to the right place. This series is for you. My previous two videos will be linked down below and let's jump into this one today. First up, let's talk about my buckets of income, okay? So you all know politics and fashion, of course, is the name of the platform, okay? And so I want to talk about my income under those two umbrellas. The politics side really comes from my background as an attorney working in public policy and I still do a lot of that work but as a consultant and so uh, I work with organizations as an anti-racism coach and trainer. I have a series of trainings that I have developed with a former colleague and now a business partner and we specialize in teaching mission driven organizations basically how to not be racist okay um, and how to uh, really uh, enable their capacity to work from an anti-racism approach in all of their internal and external efforts. The other thing is that I support organizations around the, their public policy needs, specifically as it relates to black girls and gender expansive youth. That is my sweet spot, it is the work that I love, and it really is part of my mission, just personally, as someone who is committed to social justice. Now, on the fashion side, which you all see a lot here on this platform, there are a series of things that I do that earn an income. First of all, um, YouTube. YouTube is now monetized for me, meaning that as you get to a certain number of subscribers and watch time, YouTube begins to give you a little bit of coin, girl, okay? So right now I'm averaging about $1,000 or so a month from YouTube, as well as the affiliate links that you all might click if you were interested in purchasing something that I talk about in a video. Also, there are just the good old old school brand collabs. I don't do a lot of those currently, but those also, of course, pay an income. And it is my own products and services, which is a bucket of income that I am the most committed to growing because I own that <laughs> and nobody else, right? Um, and so I have my white toenail season products, both a candle and a reed diffuser that is in collaboration with uh, Quinn Perfumes, another black woman owned business out of Richmond. I have my ebook that I talk a lot about with you all, how to declutter and curate a style that you love. And I also have developed a series of workshops that I've done in the past and I plan to get back into in 2023. So I think that's probably about maybe, what did I say, five, six specific streams of income that fall under the politics and fashion umbrella. And I think it's important to note that since becoming a solopreneur full-time, I left my full-time job last year on December 22nd, um, all of those streams of income have increased what I earned last year while working for an employer by about 70%, which I think pat myself on the back, is pretty darn good as a new business owner. Now, a big question that I got, again, over on Instagram was, how do I find clients? How do I find clients? And so I want to focus on both sides of the brain here, and I'll be doing that throughout the video just because I think it makes things easier for you all. On my end, it all just kind of comes together and makes sense. But I'm sure for other people, they're like, you do what? And then you do this? And then you do that? Yeah, I know, girl. So on the politics side, um, I found clients through my consulting business is the best way to probably describe that work 
simply by calling up everyone who I knew who I enjoyed working with before I began to work for myself and I said hey here's what I'm thinking about doing what do you think about it so I did a series of informational interviews. So all of the organizations that I had worked with before, even when I was kind of training within my last public policy job, I reached out to those people. Um, I called mentors. I called people who I had learned something from through their organizational trainings and said, here are the modules that I'm thinking about. What do you think about, you know, me kind of pitching this to other orgs? Do they need these types of services? I really opened myself up to honestly criticism, feedback, and the potential of receiving clients. I didn't necessarily go into it with that hope, but I knew if I just put myself out there and started to have the conversations, then something would come from it. And that is exactly what happened. I booked my first client from an organization that I was very familiar with and had worked with and even done some um, presentations with. And that relationship just grew, grew, grew to the point where now it is my largest contract. But it started simply with the conversation. And so for folks who are watching this video hoping to get some advice about building your clientele, I would say that if your business or your solopreneurship is within kind of the realm of where you currently work, is within your nine to five, then the first thing you have to do is start to leverage those contacts that you already have. And that's probably true for about everybody. Uh, I work with a business coach who once told me, everybody you know either wants to buy something from you or they know someone who does. And that simple kind of adage helped to take so much of the pressure off of me because what it meant was I could put myself out there and not worry about any negative consequence because everybody I know either wants to buy something from me or they know someone who does. And so finding clients really just takes putting yourself out there and in the case of a consultancy where you are working upon an expertise that people already know you for, start with your current network girl. Just start reaching out to those warm leads and I was very specific in telling people hey if you are not interested in the trainings that I am developing if you are not interested in my consulting services can you please share those services with someone else and that is also how I began to gain even more clients now on the fashion side what I will say is specifically about working with brands is pitching it's pitching, pitching, pitching. Um, I think I thought that once I hit 10,000 followers on Instagram, that brands were gonna be like beating down the, the door to work with me. And to a certain degree, more brand collabs have come in, paying a higher rate, of course. But it is, again, one of the smaller buckets of income that I have. Now, part of that is intentional because Y'all know, if you follow me over on Instagram, I'm very particular about the brands that I work with. I want for those brands to be ones that align with my values, um, ones that, of course, I have a genuine relationship with or love for. Um, so the two most recent brands that I work with are brands that I respect, are brands that have values that are similar to mine. Y'all aren't going to see me working with the Kardashians. You're not going to see me working with McDonald's. No shade, no tea. Those are just not businesses that I highly regard and respect. So um, I have found that if I want to find those businesses that I highly regard and respect, what I have to do is pitch, 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 pitch. If you are looking for resources as a content creator around pitching, I recommend Monroe Steele. She has over in her Etsy shop a series of tools and resources that are all around pitching, brand collabs, monetization, etc. that I know for me, I definitely found useful. Um, but pitching can simply just be an email, it can be a DM. Uh, definitely you want to have what's called a media kit, which is kind of like a resume for content creators ready to go so they understand a little bit more about your brand, your background, your numbers, what you bring to the table. But I set a um, goal, you all, and I shared this in a recent blog post, of earning $6,000 um, in the month of December at least 
in brand collabs and I'm already halfway there simply because I pitched and it is something that is so valuable. Again, the worst someone can say to you is no. That that's that's the worst. Or they can say, well, I can't pay you, but I can give you a product, and that may be great for you. I don't do posts in exchange for products, but at the very least, it might be the beginning of a relationship with a brand that you truly love and adore. Pitch girl, pitch girl, pitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That is how you find your clients as a content creator, especially if you were considered to be a micro influencer. Now let's get into the bag, okay? When the money comes, what do you do with it? As a solopreneur, I have gotten this question so many times. Um, I sat down with an accountant for like an hour long one-on-one -on -one meeting. How do I build systems in my business to, you know, do the right thing with this money, especially because I don't have time to go out like Wesley Snipes or Lauren Hill. The government ain't coming for me about taxes. Like, what do I need to do to be on the right side of the law <laughs> with this income? Especially uh, at first when it was side hustle money, right? And so one of the first things, a piece of advice that the accountant, her name is Keela of Little Fish Accounting. If you are looking for an accountant, I highly recommend her, a black woman who does the daggone thing. Um, one of the first things that Keela told me was to open a business account. Open a business account, or at the very least, she said, open a separate checking account so that those funds are not co-mingling. And that was one of the greatest pieces of advice that I ever received. Um, she then told me to get a piece of software like QuickBooks in order to categorize your spending between personal and business expenses. Second piece of advice that was so, so important because now what I do is I invoice my clients through QuickBooks and I get paid through QuickBooks directly to my account. I also sit down monthly and go through all of my transactions for the month that have come out of my business account and I categorize them so that uh, QuickBooks can then create for me a profit and loss statement that I share with my accountant. Actually, for QuickBooks, your accountant can have direct access to your kind of books if that's what you want. Um, but the important part is that it also estimates your taxes quarterly and yearly so you know how much you need to be giving to the IRS out of this income remember as a solopreneur taxes ain't coming out of your check no more sis so you have to be responsible for that and a platform like QuickBooks is so so helpful and once again it like seamlessly merges with your bank account and your accountant can have access to it so it is ground zero for my business now I have to say that all business accounts are not made alike. And one of the things uh, that I did not do was carefully vet my business account. Um, I definitely, definitely recommend doing your due diligence, determining whether Wells Fargo, Capital One, SunTrust, now Truist, Bank of America, determining who has the best business account for you. It might even be local banks or credit unions that you would prefer to work with. I know when I compare my bank with um, Ray's bank, for example, my partner's bank, um, hers is so much better. The amount of fees that I have been hit with consistently this year, simply because I did not understand how my business account works, y'all have no idea. Like it has been a pretty, pretty penny. So please, I highly recommend determining what kind of business account is good for you. The other thing that you want to consider is also having a business savings account and or business credit card. Because trust me, there are going to be those months where you feel like you are invoice rich and cash poor. And so your business becomes like 100% lucrative and, and, and liquid where you feel like you're just kind of coasting from month to month. We all have those days or those months where the mortgage is due or the rent is due or the car payment is due, but that invoice ain't hit yet okay so having that savings account to draw from that you can then replenish when you do have your invoice or that business card that you can then pay off when you do have your invoice that is paid is going to be critical as a solopreneur you don't have you know investors typically 
right? You you don't have um, business partners because you are a solopreneur. You are a solo entrepreneur. And so all of that income that you need to run your business and manage your life to pay yourself comes from you. So please ensure that you are doing your due diligence around the best kind of financial services whether it be bank account, uh, business credit card, etc., that you need for your business. On this topic, another question that I get asked a lot is about saving and investing specifically for retirement. I also get asked about health insurance, so I'll lump that in this category as well. Let's start with the insurance, okay? Good old Barack Obama and Obamacare has provided insurance on the marketplace where you can go through your state, healthcare.gov, whatever state you're in, and you can find a health care plan that is the best for you during open enrollment. If you were watching this in December, now is about the time of open enrollment and it is the perfect time for you to find a health care plan that is going to work for you if you plan to go in business for yourself in the following year. Um, Ray and I did that and I remember going to the health care website for the state of Virginia and just feeling completely overwhelmed. I was like, I don't know what they're saying. This is all in Greek when you had it that there was the name of insurance brokers that can help you determine the best plan for you girl we called someone from that list 100 percent free might i add and she was able to help us fill out our paperwork and determine based upon our um, health issues or pre-existing conditions how often we needed to go to the doctor the dentist if we needed eye care as well what was the best plan for us now i'll be transparent in saying that my insurance it's a pretty penny per month. Um, I am almost 40 years old. I am a breast cancer survivor. Therefore, I need a plan that is not going to have a huge deductible because I do have to go to the doctor several times a year and I do have medication that I'm on long term. So my insurance for my dental care and my health care is about $500 a month, but they have plans as low as 250, 200, maybe even less than that on up to $1,000 per month. I understand that if you were not an individual and you have children, you have a partner, and you are the primary source of income, that can be cost prohibitive. I completely understand. But for me, paying that $500 a month was worth my freedom. I did not want to be beholden to a job just because I got an insurance benefit. I felt like I could bring in enough income to where that $500 a month would be less than 10% of what I earn. And that has been the case every month this year and I am grateful. On the flip side, another benefit that our jobs often give us are our retirement savings, which is really important. Saving for retirement is not something that we can take for granted. I don't care how young you are. Um, and it is something that I knew going into solopreneurship that I wanted to be very disciplined about. And so I will max out my individual retirement account for this year. It is called a Roth IRA. Uh, there are Roth and traditional IRAs and these are um, retirement investing accounts that you can save up to $6,000 a year in. Now, not only are you saving for your retirement, but the other benefit is that that $6,000 then becomes income that is not taxed because we, we trying to save on some of them taxes, girl. <laughs> okay. Um, and depending on your age and how much you already have saved for retirement, that $6,000 may not be enough. I can't speak for you. You're going to have to do a retirement calculator on something like bankrate.com um, or talk to a financial planner or advisor. Um, and so what you may want to do if you have the additional income is to put money into a brokerage account like a mutual or an index fund not specifically for retirement because that money can be touched without penalties however it's the same idea of investing in a group of stocks and bonds not a financial expert but i have done just a little bit of research on this okay so once again for retirement savings you're going to want to open up an ira to ensure that you have money that is being set aside. My account is with Vanguard. I may be switching soon to another company. Um, and per month, the money just comes directly out of my account. 
Uh, on the other side, if you find that the IRA is not enough money for you to be saved, then think about a brokerage account like a mutual fund or an index fund. Do your research on both of these uh, types of financial investment tools. I highly recommend Clever Girl Finance. Uh, Bola Sukumbi is just a wonderful resource. She's helped me out so much with money. I mean, I don't know her, but sis, you know, I love you. Um, and she has two books uh, out right now, one on sa saving and budgeting and one specifically on investing. And her investment book has a lot of resources I think that would be helpful for you as a solopreneur. And that is it, girl. That is the money part of our solo producership series. If you have more questions, please let me know down below. I am so down to continue these videos. I just think that solo entrepreneurship is so, so important, especially as black people, black women, those of us who do not come from generational wealth. The idea of having additional streams of income, no matter if you have a nine to five or you are like me as a solopreneur, it's just vital to our stability and our ability to pay it forward uh, currently or in the future to future generations all right uh, thank y'all so much for watching again follow me over on Instagram for daily style self-care social justice inspiration and I will see you good people cross the internet peace